In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Netgear Arlo wireless camera system. Now, I have reviewed other wireless cameras in the past, and whenever I've done that, there's always been a few people get in touch to say, hold on a minute, you said it was wireless. It's not wireless because you have to plug the cameras into a power source. Well, of course, yes, Mr. Obvious, that's how Wi-Fi works. You do always need power at both ends. However, on this occasion, you might like these ones because these cameras run on battery power. And that, of course, helps with positioning. You can put these in places where you might not want to run cables. In addition, of course, they're HD cameras, 720p HD. They've got night vision and motion activation. There's apps for iOS and Android. And you can also view the cameras over the Internet through a normal web browser. Now, I bought the two camera starter kit. I actually got this one quite a few months ago, but it's only recently that I've had a chance to set it up. I imported mine from Amazon in the US. There's no financial benefit to doing it that way. It's just that I had some store credit built up there that I needed to spend. Now, you don't have to buy it in a two camera kit. You can start all the way down in one camera and a base station. And you could also go all the way up to five cameras and a base station in kit form. But you don't have to buy it in a bundle like that. You can just get the one camera. And then whenever you want to add another camera, you can buy individual cameras as well. Now, I'll put some specs on screen, but if you want to read through all of these, you'll need to press pause now. But to summarize, the cameras are wireless. They're 802.11n, 2.4 gigahertz, 720p cameras with water resistant cases. They can go indoors or outdoors. They've got motion activation and infrared illumination. And they run on these batteries here. Each camera takes four of these. These are CR123A lithium cells. Now you might not be able to get these in every store but you can quite easily get them through places like Amazon. Inside my box were four mounts. On one side we've got a metal dome and on the other side there's a screw hole. The dome itself has got a rough coating which will stop the camera moving around on it and we've got the appropriate screws to mount those to the wall. The documentation inside the kit includes a quick start guide as well as a sticker for you to put up to inform people that they're being recorded by your security system. Now inside my kit I got a US power supply but of course you'll get the appropriate one for whatever country you buy your system from and in addition to that there's a Cat5e network cable. And then finally we've got the base station. This is the thing that the cameras transmit their video back to. This then has to be plugged into your existing router via that network cable. On the left there we've got two USB ports that apparently are for future expansion but will probably never be used for anything. We've got a reset hole, an on-off switch and a power socket. On the side there's a sync button as well. I'll show you what that does in a moment. And on the front we've got some LED indicator lights. I'm going to set my system up using the app which is available for iOS or Android. I think you might also be able to set this system up without an app just using a web browser but I haven't tried it that way. Anyway following the instructions that you get you plug the network cable in, you plug the power cable in, you switch it on, you plug the other end into the back of your router and then you go and get your camera. Now let's just have a look around one of these cameras first for a minute. So you can see it's got a flat base on there, so you just put it down on a normal surface. On the back we've got a dint, which is rubberized, which attaches to the mount. And on the base we've got a tripod screw hole, so we can put it on pretty much any kind of tripod mount we want. The bottom has this battery compartment which has got a rubber seal around it to stop any moisture getting in, of course. And then we've got to put those four batteries in here. Now, these lithium cells aren't rechargeable. They're just use once batteries. You could use rechargeables, but it's not really recommended, apparently. Looking at the front of the camera, of course, we've got the lens at the top, as I mentioned, 720p. On the bottom in the middle, that's the motion sensor. To the right of that is a little indicator LED. And then the LED on the left is actually an infrared illuminator to light up areas once it gets dark. Right, so let's get these cameras synced up with the base station. The first step is to hold down the sync button on the top of the camera itself. You get a blue flashing light. You then go to the base station, hold the sync button on that. You get a quick flashing orange light on the camera itself and then a rapidly flashing blue one, which indicates the camera is now synced to the base station. Once the camera is in normal operation, those LEDs aren't lit. Right, so I've got both cameras synced up now. So let's just have a look at them in action. So I've press to go live because the cameras aren't live until you press that button. You see they're in low power mode until you press a button and then the camera starts transmitting video to the base station. So you can see here I've got a live video in that one and I've put the other camera on the windowsill. So let me just move that one around. You can see we've got both cameras live at the same time 
in the same app. So everything's working fine. Let's just take a moment to look at some mounting options. So inside the box, we've got this dome that attaches to the back of the camera with magnets. There's magnets inside the camera itself. The dome is just a piece of metal, but it's got a nice strong attachment between those two things. And you can't really see it moving around too much. But of course, that dome just attaches to the wall with one screw. You could get other more secure methods. You can attach anything to that tripod screw mount, of course, pretty much. But I've also got this table and ceiling and wall mount, which I thought might be more used to me in positioning the camera where I was planning on putting it in the end. After all, I don't really need it, but I just thought I'll show it to you. This attaches with two screws to the wall rather than that one screw that the other mount attaches to. And it just gives you a little bit more freedom of movement in the overall positioning. So you see the two screws go through the plate on the back there. The front just twists onto the uh, back plate, but you can see you get a bit more movement with this. You can put it all over the place if you were to put it on a ceiling. And of course, in the software, it also lets you flip the image if that helps you at all. That indent on the back, as we mentioned, is rubberized. That stops the camera moving around once you've got it in position. But you can also use that tripod screw mount for a much more secure fit. I've decided to stick with the dome mount. So I'll show you how quickly you can install one of these. First off, drill a hole in the wall. I think it was six and a half millimeters. And then you put the plastic plug into that and then you put the screw into that just leaving a little bit of room so that you can put the dome on top of the screw and hold it nice and firmly against the wall you don't want it moving about so that's that and then you just put the camera onto the dome then you activate positioning mode in the app and that lets you see what the camera sees but with less delay so you can get the camera position exactly how you want it and the whole thing from end to end took me probably two minutes if you're concerned that those white cameras are a little bit too noticeable on the wall, you can get silicon skins for them, which will help them to blend in a little bit better. Now, one thing we need to talk about, which we haven't mentioned yet, is battery life. How long do those four batteries last in a camera? Well, the manufacturers say it's anywhere between four and six months. Now, you might be thinking, well, hold on, that's a bit inaccurate. Can you not narrow it down a bit more? Well, no, because it's based on a few things. You see, the settings for the video quality can affect this. Also, how long the camera is recording and how long you're actually streaming and watching video over it. Because when you're not doing that, it's in a low power standby mode. So those estimates are based on the camera recording for about five minutes per day. That might not sound like much, but when it's only doing 10 second recordings here and there, it actually turns out to be plenty for me. So the next question, inevitably, is how much does it cost to run one of these cameras in a year? Well, let's assume that I'm running out of battery power every four months at that minimum number. So that means I'm using 12 batteries per year. In the UK, if I buy 12 lithium cells, you're looking at about £20. So there you go, it's £20 to run each camera per year. Obviously, that's going to be more expensive than a Wi-Fi camera that you can plug into the mains power supply, but it also gives you the convenience of being able to put the camera wherever you want. And for me, that's worth paying the extra for. For other people, it might well not be. And one more thing to think about with regard to battery powered cameras, of course, you're going to need to be able to have regular access to the camera to be able to replace those batteries. However, you don't want everyone to have access to it. So you don't want it to be in a position where someone could just reach up and take it off the wall. My solution to this would be to put it below an upstairs window if you've got one, somewhere you can reach out of and just quickly take the camera off the wall to replace those batteries. However, passers-by couldn't get to it unless they had a large pair of ladders. And if you're especially concerned about the security of the camera itself, I have seen people in the forums talk about putting the camera on a tripod screw mount, but sticking the camera to the mount by putting Loctite adhesive in the screw threads. Right, let's take a closer look at the app now. I've got this running here on an iPad to give us a nice big screen to look at. Notice I've got three cameras now, although I've deactivated one at the bottom. The top two aren't live. Those images that you're looking at are from earlier on. If I click the top right one to make it live, I've just got to click that button in the middle of the screen. It takes a couple of seconds to activate. Now those thumbnails that are on there are from the last time I was using the camera or the last time it recorded something itself. We can make this full screen. Just go bottom right there. That's a full screen image now. Looks pretty decent. As I say, 720p HD. It's not super sharp, but it's, it's pretty clear. I'll step out here live so you can see what the uh, movement's like. So there you go. I'm waving just to give you an idea as to the frame rate. Very smooth. Not me. The, uh, the frame rate was smooth. Right, I've got the iPad in the other room here. So I'll just pop back to that now. And I can show you here, I'm adjusting the brightness at the bottom there. I've got a few different controls. Every time you do anything, there's a little bit of a delay before 
before it happens so you just have to be patient so that's the brightness although i don't tend to mess around with that it seems to be fine just sort of left in the middle the next one along we can take a snapshot which will take a still frame out of what we're looking at and put that in our photos folder then we can activate a manual recording you can see i press that now and it's counting up at the bottom so what we're looking at on screen now is being recorded and once I press stop, that then gets transmitted from the camera back to the base station. And that recording is in the base station now. And of course, over time, it'll get uploaded as well to the cloud or whatever. Now, you can see other videos that I've recorded earlier on. These are all stored in the base station. You can access them really quickly. Rather than them being in the cloud, the base station has some memory in it. So I'm accessing the video files now from the base station to my iPad rather than going from the camera to the iPad, which is always going to be a little bit slower. So here's a video that I recorded earlier on, pretty similar to the other one that I've just done, but without the wave. But you, you get an idea. This is a motion activated video. So I didn't actually press record on this. The camera saw me come out and recorded this itself. As you can see here, we can zoom in. See, look, who's that villain there? Uh, shifty looking fella. Don't trust that fella at all. So I've got it to record a short video. You can set the time length that you want it to record once it sees motion, but there's always a little bit of a delay you can sort of get a couple of feet into the scene before the video starts recording you can see i actually got out of the door before it started there but you know it caught me on video anyway then we can download that video to the phone or ipad or whatever i'm using and then from there we can email it we can put it on twitter or whatever we want because it's now just a video file on the ipad now the thing that triggered me to finally get this camera set up believe it or not i've had it in the house for six months or so is because i had a hedgehog that started visiting in the back garden i noticed it was out during the daytime now hedgehogs are not supposed to be out during the day if they are there's supposed to be something very wrong now i wasn't too sure what times it was coming in and where it was going from and did it have any young anywhere that it was looking after and what was going on so i started putting little cameras out in the garden i got this set up just for this to see what was going on where was it going where was it coming from and what was wrong with it so all these cameras have been motion activated i moved them around the garden different positions once i realized where it was coming from and to and as soon as it walks past one of the cameras it sets off the motion trigger which then starts the camera recording and you can set the recording length to whatever you want usually i've set it to about 20 seconds or so those 20 seconds of video are then sent up to the base station but when i then see that there's been motion because the motion activation has been triggered i get a little alert on my phone a pop-up message or an email if i want it i can then click on that and watch the video that's stored in the base station i can then download those videos and these are what you're looking at now. There's a few things that you can get from these. You can see how it operates at night, how quickly the motion activation works. You can see how the infrared illumination lights up the area that we've got an IR cut filter on here because that means the colors are accurate during the day and then it goes into black and white at night. Now, as far as the hedgehog goes, I know some people will be concerned. Don't worry, it's now returned to being nocturnal again. You see, the thing was, it was a little bit hungry, I think. I fed it up with some cat food for a few days and it's gone back to its normal routine. I still see it, but it only comes out at night now. So panic over, but it was a good way to test out those cameras. And it's the kind of thing that you couldn't do with a wide wired wi-fi camera imagine i had to put a big power cable across the the lawn and have that powered all night and then i'd have some sort of adapter which i'd need to put in plastic or something to stop all the electricity going bananas these things i could just plonk them wherever i want in the garden and whatever comes near them will activate the motion activation start the camera recording in the morning i get up and it says at three in the morning or whatever there was motion on the back fence so then i can have a look at the video and see exactly what's been going on as you can see we've got a couple of cats visiting here as well in the middle of the night here's a magpie that decided to eat the hedgehog food that was left over notice also there's a drip on the lens there at the bottom in the middle that's something you're gonna to have to think about if you put these cameras outside you've got to watch that if they do get wet they tend to get the drips so that it gets stuck to the lens a little bit as you can see here as well as the hedgehog we've had a robin we've had cats we've got this mouse here now so there's all sorts of stuff going on in the garden that i didn't even know about now just another quick word about battery life the cameras of course try and preserve battery life wherever possible so i've got one camera here but there's another camera to the left on the lawn if i start looking through that camera now you can see the ir illumination comes on so the ir leds on a camera only come on when you're looking at the camera live or whether the camera's recording something because it's seen motion they're not on all the time 
Right, let's talk about camera range. How far away you can place a camera from that base station and still get a good signal. According to the specs, it's 300 plus feet line of sight. Now I'll talk about how it's worked in my experience. Wherever I've put these cameras, whether it's at the front or the back of the house or anywhere in the garden, I'm getting a full strength signal, which is three bars. Now admittedly, it's not a big house or a big garden, but just to give you an idea as to how far away the base station is from this camera, it's above the conservatory in the room above there, about halfway along. Now look to the back right of your image, there's a bench there with a white bucket on it. If we go to the other camera we can see that bench on the left there. So this is the second camera and this one is also giving a full strength signal. And I think the signal strength is down to that separate base station. It definitely seems to pick up a good strong signal. Also notice above each image we have a battery indicator next to the strength meter as well. You might have spotted there that those cameras have custom names. It helps you identify them. So you can call them whatever you want. It makes it a lot easier to spot what cameras recorded motion when it sends you an alert on your phone. There are also lots of customization options for how the cameras react to motion, whether they record video and things. But one thing I've got to point out, notice at the top here, it says motion and audio detection on. You need to ignore the audio detection bit. That's for a different camera. They do another camera, the Arlo Q, which is an internal camera for inside the house that has a microphone on it and two-way communication. The Arlo, the water resistant battery powered one, doesn't have a mic on it and it can't detect audio. But back to these settings, we can have all the cameras armed, we can have all the cameras disarmed, we can have schedules for whether the cameras are armed at certain times of the day and night. There's also geofencing on here, so when you leave the house with whatever device you've set in there, say your phone, all the cameras can come on, all the motion sensors can come on as well. And then you can do custom things, which is what I've done here. So you can see at the top of the screen, I've given it a name that I recognise what this function is actually going to do. The function at the top there, we've got the fence gap camera, we've got it to look for motion. Now, if we go into that motion setting, we can see we set it quite high there. So if it sees any motion, it's going to notice it. Then what's it going to do? Well, we can get it to record video if we want it to. And I've got it to do that and I've set it to 20 seconds worth of video. So if anything comes through the fence gap, it records 20 seconds worth of video. And at the bottom, it sends me a push notification to my iPad or phone or whatever it is I've set it up on. So that's just a quick look at one mode, but you can do all sorts of things. You can have the modes combined. You can have them do two cameras or record video. The other one just looks for motion, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's look at the settings for one of these cameras. We can switch the camera on and off at the top. We can give the camera a name that we recognize what the camera is actually pointing at. And then we've got some video settings. So if we have a look at those, we can turn the night vision on or off, which of course is the infrared illumination and the black and white image. We can invert the image, flip it upside down. We can also crop in on the image here. It's obviously not a, a optical zoom, it's a digital zoom. So you're losing image quality when you zoom in on it. But if you wanted to just cut something off at the edge, you could perhaps do that. I don't think I'll bother. Then at the bottom, we've got three different quality settings. Now notice I've chosen the top one, but there are two others and they do apparently affect the battery life. I can't tell you how long because I haven't got through a set of batteries yet, but I'm using the best quality one, which is this one here. That's the sharpest one it'll do. Let me show you what the other ones look like though, because they're not particularly impressive. The middle one, it's not too bad, but the lowest one is really pretty poor quality and bear in mind you try to capture what's going on you want a pretty decent quality image so I've set it to the top quality and if it runs through batteries a little bit quicker well so be it. Now, when you buy an Arlo system, you automatically get the basic package, which means it'll store your videos for up to seven days in the cloud and you can attach up to five cameras to your system and you get three months of customer support. If you want anything beyond that, you have to pay. So if you want to attach more cameras or have longer storage in the cloud, you get the Premier or the Elite package for a certain fee per month. Now, I mentioned earlier on that the base station has some flash memory within it, and it's 128 megs. So that's going to store the most recent video files. It enables you to have instant access to those. If you want to watch what's just happened, you can look at it very quickly and download it to your phone if you want to keep it. Older files, of course, will be uploaded to the cloud. Now, 128 megs doesn't sound like an awful lot, but as an example, a 20-second video file that's been created by motion activation is just 1.8 megs in size so you can fit quite a few of those in that 128 megs before it offloads them into the cloud now that motion activation on these cameras is triggered by this sensor in the middle at the bottom now a lot of wi-fi cameras that look at motion 
use it by analyzing the image, the video, and seeing what's moving within there. This doesn't do that. It looks at the whole scene. Now, what you can do is you can affect the sensitivity of that sensor. You can move it up and down, but unlike most Wi-Fi cameras, for example, their own Arlo Q camera, you can't exclude or include certain areas of the video because the camera isn't recording video all the time. What this camera does, of course, anything goes in front of that sensor, it's going to start recording. So you're going to have to be very careful with your placement of these cameras. Otherwise, you're just going to get loads of footage of your washing blowing in the wind or whatever. Now, in this video, we've been looking at the iPad app mostly, but of course, the apps are available for iOS and Android. A lot of people will be using them on smartphones. So I thought I'd show you what it looks like on a smartphone. We get the same two cameras there. We get all the same functionality we get in the tablet version. We can watch the videos back. We can make them full screen. We can change the different modes, go into the settings. Everything is there that's in the iPad app. And also, you can do exactly the same stuff, all of it, online through a normal web browser. You can watch your videos, you can stream your cameras live. And of course, I should say, of course, people will ask, if you take your phone away from your Wi-Fi network and just use it on a mobile phone network, you can still, of course, see your videos at home. You don't have to be on Wi-Fi. Another thing I should mention, they also have an if this then that functionality. So it integrates with that. So if you're into home automation, you can use your Arlo camera system to activate various functions, whether you walk past the sensors and something happens or whether it's a certain time of day and all the cameras will come on, whatever you want, there's all sorts of stuff in there. One last thing, I wanted to show you what this camera can see in the dark. So just have a look at this scene in the day and then we'll have a look at it at night. You can see we can make out stuff. It's not as bright, obviously, as it was during the daytime, but this whole area is being lit up by one little IR LED on the front of the camera. If we were to turn off the infrared night vision function, you can see what the camera can see. It's not very much at all. So it's definitely better with the infrared night vision on. Of course, everything ends up being black and white, but you can definitely see what's going on. If you want to light up an area like this with even more light, you can buy separate IR LED illuminator panels. So there you go, that's the Netgear Arlo wireless camera system, and I'm so made up with mine. I've ended up buying two additional cameras to go with the two that I've already got, and they're just so easy to set up. Get them out of the box, put the batteries in, press the sync button, you're up and running in about two minutes, then you can put the camera wherever you want, and you get a full strength signal. Of course, if you were to get a traditional Wi-Fi camera that you can plug into a mains power supply or supply power over Ethernet to it, you're going to save yourself a lot of money over this system. But what this system does is give you flexibility to put those cameras wherever you want and move them around very easily. I don't know any other system where I could have got a camera that's water resistant. I could just put it at the bottom end of the garden. It's got a four month battery life. It's got motion activation. It's got infrared night vision. I mean, these things are great. And I've been able to capture all sorts of footage that I've never been able to capture with any other cameras. Of course, there's an ongoing cost associated with getting batteries for these cameras. And there's a little bit of thing to think about with regard to getting those batteries disposed of correctly, all that kind of stuff. But I'm absolutely made up with these cameras. So all that remains for me now is to say, as always, thanks for watching. What are you doing now? I'm typing a comment. Well, I just hope it's something useful for a change. Of course, I'm pointing out the fact that when you have batteries in something, when they go flat, you need to replace them. So when did it become your job to state the obvious all the time? Well, no one else has pointed it out, so clearly they don't know. Therefore, I'm passing on my years of experience and knowledge to the general public. Everyone knows how batteries work. That's why no one bothered mentioning it. OK, then, how about this one? He pointed out it was wireless, and yet I can clearly see two wires coming out of the base station. Yet again with the obvious. 
I don't understand how you think any of this stuff could be useful to anyone. The problem with you is that you're so clueless, you don't know when you're being idiotic. And of course that's not to mention the wires going into the wall to power the router, and then we've got the broadband wires going into the house, and then of course there's the electricity wires going from the house to the power station, and then the people at the power station are going to have loads of wires, and they've probably got wired chargers for their phones, Oh, I wish I was wired. Then I could put up with this nonsense. Wired, and their neighbours will have wires as well. And I bet they read Wired magazine. And there's 